Welcome to the Wild Precious Lives podcast. I am your host for this week, Ginny McEnany, and today I am interviewing the beautiful uh, Maddie Keogh from Your Journey Yoga and Meditation. She's an experienced yogi guru, and she's also got her own digital marketing company. She's led a great journey, and I'm excited to share that with you. But before we dive into that, I've got some exciting news. We have a program sponsor. Very excited to share this with you. We have Living the Change, which is a documentary made by two, I think they're Australian or Kiwi filmmakers. So they're independent filmmakers and they are doing an amazing job following their dreams and producing Living the Dream, which is a documentary all about the global crisis that we're facing today and solutions that these amazing people, just like you and me, are coming up with. So they're sharing these inspiring stories of people living this change in their lives and in their community um, in a regenerative, regenerative way. I watched this for the first time with my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter, and it was so inspiring just to let you see that you can make a change even if you're just doing one little thing in the world. That little thing starts the ball rolling and affects other people. So I love this documentary and I love to support independent filmmakers who are following their dreams. So we will have um, some show notes about where to uh, download this. It's only $10 and it is so worth it. But if you go to our show notes on wildpreciouslives.com, you will find that. Otherwise, straight from the podcast if you want to uh, upload it I've made a bit.ly link so it's bit.ly slash change WPL so it changes in living the change WPL is in wild precious lives so bit.ly slash change WPL so please download it we get a tiny commission which is even better for us but we just love supporting independent filmmakers who are following their dreams Without further ado, I would like to now get into the show and introduce you to today's guest, Maddie Keogh. Welcome to the program, Maddie. You are our very Thank first you. guest on My Precious Lives. I'm very excited to be your first guest. Thank you. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about your journey, Maddie, and how you've got to where you are today? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, most of my life, I have been working in the corporate world and um, I always knew it wasn't for me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you kind of get stuck into it and you, and people tell you that's the only way and you, you've got to do this and you've got to do that and fit in a certain way. Um, but I always knew there was something else. Um, I think I, I got to a bit of a crisis point in my life um, after a bad breakup and um, I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and I, um, I got very sick. So I ended up with fibromyalgia and a lot of gut issues um, and I was in a really bad way and I didn't know what to do. So I, um, I went on a yoga retreat in Bali and it pretty much changed my life. Um, I I have done yoga all my life, but just here and there, like quite sporadically. And then um, when I was doing it every day, so you do it twice a day, um, I actually realized how life-changing it is. But it's when you do it on that regular basis. Um, so because with anxiety, you can't, you feel like you can't control your thoughts. Um, and you just don't get a break. You don't get a mental break. Um, with yoga, you are forced to give your mind a break because you are completely present. You're looking at your the way you're moving. Am I every movement? Am I in line? Um, you know, do I have the right alignment? Um, am I breathing? Um, and then the breath is so powerful. So just by combining the movement and the breath, you just are releasing so much energy in the body. Um, and, you know, you were, you do release emotions through the, through, um, the movement and the breath as well. So um, it was a completely healing journey for me. And um, when I got back, um, I, to, I was living in Brisbane at the time, I just knew I had to do teaching um, and I started my course. Um, doing a yoga teaching course is also life-changing. You just learn so much about yourself. And um, uh, so, yeah, there was that. And I 
pretty much um, met the man of my dreams and he lived on the Gold Coast where I've always wanted to live, except, um, you know, it's just hard to get jobs. But I, um, I sort of made the leap and started my own digital marketing company and you know, everyone was giving me scare stories. It's not going to work. But when you're doing the right thing for you, it works when you're on your path. And I just had work um, coming to me and um, the most amazing doors opening for me. It was just incredible. Um, and I'm teaching yoga on the coast um, and just absolutely loving it. Wow. So living my dream. This is what I always <laughs> dreamed of. And I was like, oh, my God, it all happened. Um yeah, but I think it all happens when you make yourself the priority first. Um, when you look after yourself, that's when your life will start to change. So tell me a little bit more about when you were at that lowest point where you had the fibromyalgia, you were very close yeah. to burnout or you had burnout. Just tell me a little bit about all of that. Completely burnt out. Um it's a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. I still work on all of this. But um, I think for firstly, the best thing you can do when you've got burnout is do something like a yoga retreat or go somewhere where you've got time for you, not to go to, on a holiday partying or whatever, but somewhere where you can meditate right um, you know, and really have time for yourself. A lot of us can't do that if you've got kids and things like that or not enough money. Um, so it's really important to just put a lot of other things into place. So um, as I said, it, the first thing is changing your mindset. So number one, make yourself the priority. Even if you've got kids, even if you've got a husband, if you are burnt out, you have nothing to give them. So it's not selfish making yourself the priority. It's not selfish going and doing yoga or whatever you enjoy, whether it's bike riding or a walk in nature. Um, you that's the priority you are. Um, until you don't, until you make that mindset change, um, yeah, things won't work out and you'll be burnt out. And then when you're burnt out, you fight with your partner or your family or friends, um, and you can't, you feel overwhelmed, you hate work because, you know, you feel like one more thing you're just going to break. Um, so I, it, you probably all know about the fill your cup. Um, you know about that? Tell, yeah. Tell us that one. So um, your cup is your energy. So if you, um, if your cup is empty, you have nothing to give to other people. You have nothing to give to your work. Um, you need to do something every day to fill that cup and then you are able to then look after other people. Um, so you've got to find out what that is, um, whether it's something that makes you happy and you try and do something every day. Um, so I think that's really important to do, but what about when you're at that really low point? So you obviously yeah. did that, you, you found something for yourself there, but what other measures did you take? Because it sounds like it was very serious. Did you seek medical help? Did you go to a naturopath? Yeah, so um, physically, the, uh, the this is just my story. I'm not advocating anything, but um, the medical system, I spent thousands of dollars and they sent me away feeling like a crazy person, like a hypochondriac. And I found a naturopath who pretty much changed me, my life as well, which um, she just helped heal my gut. I haven't had fibromyalgia since. Um, but it's everything. It's you looking after yourself physically as well as mentally. Um, so, you know, I know meditation, you hear it all the time, meditate, meditate. And, you know, a lot of people aren't into it. It doesn't have to be, you know, you can start with just breathing five minutes a day like taking deep breaths and just doing something to be in the present moment is a meditation, whether it's taking a walk and feeling the ground under your, your feet and being completely present um, in the moment. So yeah, meditation is really important. Um, the other thing is just healing. We have to heal every day. Um, whether that uh, I, I started being my own counselor. So it's weird at first, you feel a little bit crazy, but you just like, you just close your eyes and you sort of, you just say, how am I feeling today? Because we're so busy, we actually don't know. And so when you start looking after yourself um, and saying, how do you feel? And then having a conversation as if you're your own counsellor, it's, um, you realise that you're actually, that's self-love and you're, 
by doing that, repairing the trust we've broken with ourselves over our whole lifetimes of making bad mistakes and talking to yourself badly, um, you're just rebuilding that trust again like you would in any relationship. Um, I did it through mantras. Like mantras are really powerful. Um, if you haven't read Louise Hay, I, I highly recommend it. That is an amazing book. Um, but, yeah, it's just changing your the your mind. Like um, instead of saying bad things, you've just got to override it with um, I love myself, I forgive myself. Um, it might be just something you're working on at that time. Like, um, you know, when I was anxious, I had to say I am safe all the time. So um, finding mantras that work for you and they're very powerful if you practice them every day. Um I love yeah. these tips. So we're looking at doing something every day to fill up our own cup. Yeah. And then we're looking at, if you can, taking time to do some sort of mindfulness activity, whether it's just breathing or or meditation, if that's what, what you want to yeah. do. And then mantras is another option as well. And yeah. I think some things suit some people, some don't suit people. So I know myself, yes, I, I try to do the meditation thing and it doesn't – at this point in time, I'm frustrated. It doesn't seem to work for me. So what you said before about just going out into nature and like just walking and, and like taking some time then, that's what I'm doing now. I'm finding walking my dog every morning is the perfect time for me to just breathe, look at the trees, listen to the birds and, and just perfect. focus. Um, and yeah. I find that's helping me at the moment as well. Yeah, that's perfect. And what about yeah. yoga? Tell me a little bit more about yoga. And, okay. you know, it's been around for centuries, but it's the in thing to do now. Why is yeah. it as good as people say? I, I try to do it. I, I can yeah. only go once a week or, you know, this is yeah. I'm maybe not prioritizing it. But tell us a little bit about the benefits of yoga. Okay. Well, if you're thinking about getting into yoga, um, the first thing is to find a studio that resonates with you because I tried a few studios at first and I just couldn't get into it. And then as soon as I found the studio, I ended up doing my yoga teaching through um, My Health um, Yoga in Queensland. Um, I stepped in and I knew they were my people. Like <laughs> they speak my language. Um, so, you know, diff studios are different and there's different styles of yoga that you're going to be attracted to. Um, so I try and keep a, a balance of um, your more masculine um, yang, like vinyasa, which is very physical. There's a flow to it and you're, you're moving the energy, the stagnant energy through movement um, and it switches off the mind because it's very much nonstop and you're breathing with every movement. It's very powerful. Um, but then you also have your more feminine practices like the yin practice where it's pretty much um, uh, stretching and meditation. So it's making you be still and some people struggle with that. Like this is just giving you time, like an hour to be with yourself, to practice um, breathing to practice, letting thoughts go and giving yourself a break. Um, so they're the two I, I practice and yeah, keeping that balance of both the masculine and the feminine, um, is really important, but, um, and yeah. then what about though? So I like that keeping that balance just say you were at that point of burnout where you don't even want to do exercise. So perhaps maybe the yin, the, the more feminine one yeah. would be the way to go when you can't even, you don't yeah. even feel like getting up and doing anything. Yeah. Yes. Yin. And there's also restorative yoga you can do. Um, so if you were completely zapped of energy, that is where you start. You go to your, you find your yin and your restorative practices and it's pretty much just, it, it's kicking in our sympathetic, um, sorry, kicking in our parasympathetic nervous system, which is where we um, renew our cells like we do in sleep. Um, and if we're not getting enough sleep or we're anxious, that's when, you know, we're not, that's when we get sick. So um, doing that is really important. Um, we're all day working from our sympathetic nervous system as we're rushing around doing work. So it's so um it's so important. It's so healing by doing your yin practices when you're burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. So yeah. um, finding a good yoga place is a key. And also yeah. I like the tips that you've given us on the types of yoga 
uh, places, uh, the types of yoga to, to yeah. maybe start with if you're not currently doing a practice. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then a little bit more about meditation then. So uh-huh. someone who is wanting to get into meditation, tell yep. us a little bit about the best way to get into that and even apps. You know, I've tried yeah, a couple of yeah. apps. Tell us, give us some yeah. feedback on what we need cool. to do. Okay. So um, if you're not big on meditation, um, you can start with some uh, guided meditations. Um so sometimes I get a bit bored with those ones that just tell you to breathe and focus on your feet, focus on relaxing this. So yes, you can, me too. Yeah, I get really bored with them. <laughs> so you, you can, you can mix it up. Um, I, there's an awesome app actually that I've got onto. It's called insight timer. I'll just double check that for you. Cool. Yeah, I'll put a called, note um, in the show notes. I'll put a link to that. Yeah. So it's called insight timer. It's got um, meditations for anything for however you're feeling um and that's probably the best app i've found right um, is that a free or cost it's free yeah Ooh, wow. okay. and you can set a timer so if you're putting it on before you go to sleep um it will just turn off automatically so yeah it's really great that's a good um, one i've tried smiling minds but i got a bit yeah that was okay but yeah, yeah right no this is this has got thousands like um of meditations on it um so yeah i uh, you've got your guided um but you can also um you don't need to stress too much i think i read um what's the book by sarah wilson um yes uh, the beast taming the beast Um, first we make the beast beautiful yes which is about anxiety and she said she was so crap at meditation when she started But she realized that by just giving herself that half hour or, you know, 10 minutes just to sit with herself, that's still an act of love. You don't have to be going off to another universe or, you know, it's literally just um, don't stress about just taking time out for yourself to breathe and relax. That's that's it. And I think even with kids as well, and if you're, you're trying to get into this and you're working, it's I, I like the idea of just starting small with small snippets. snippets. Yeah. So what I even started doing, but I got out of, is just I made a cup of tea and I sat there in the morning on a chair before everyone got up and had the sun shining on my face and I just closed my eyes and I thought about my five senses. So I just felt like one minute I just thought about, okay, what can I smell? For the second minute, what what am I tasting with my cup of tea? For the next minute, you know, what am I feeling? I can feel my feet on the floor. I can feel my bum on the chair, that kind of stuff. And that was a five-minute thing and I thought, perfect. that's a good start. You know, it's, it's, it's a perfect doing something, start. isn't it? Yeah, mm. because there you're training your brain to switch off and it actually, you get better and better at it. So um, it is practice. Mm. So that's the perfect way to start. So how yeah. often do you now do yoga and meditate? Well, I know you're teaching yoga, but if you're not teaching, how often do you do the meditation and your yoga practice? Uh, every day. Right. Yeah, so, so meditation, how long, when? Um, it really depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes um, I need a longer meditation. I can meditate up, up to an hour, but um, I've been meditating for years and years. But um yeah, sometimes I just, uh, you know, a 20-minute um, in the middle of the day when I'm a bit zapped of energy will pick me up. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's other things. You can go to meditations. One um, that even my partner, he's not so much into meditation, but he loves to go to those um, sound healing meditations. And they're actually really powerful. Um, and the sound actually is, um, there is a science to it. I don't know how to explain it, but it's on the same um, wavelengths as your brain waves or something. So it takes you into a deeper relaxation and it's pretty incredible. So what's the so, sound that they use? So they use crystal bowls. Yeah. And, and it makes this sound that like um, reverberates, the vibration just goes through the body and it's so incredible. So it's live, um, it's not a recording they're actually No, doing. yeah. That sounds so, so interesting. Yeah, the sound healing meditations are amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, where were we going with this question? <laughs> going oh, yeah, so your day. daily practice. Yeah, my daily practice. Um, so... If no one's at home and I've got a nice space, I like to just do my own practice. But I try – it's nice to also just get away because I work from home. It's nice to get out of the house for me and go to a studio where, you know, 
I've got someone telling me what what to do and I can switch off. So um, I do go to a studio probably about five days a week. Yeah. And how? Yeah. what benefits have you found doing both yoga and meditation for, like you said, the anxiety and just your health in general? Um, yeah, it's it's everything. Like it will help you cope with everyday situations. What you do in yoga, all of the things you're practicing, you then take it into your everyday life. So, um, for example, in your yin practice, um, you know, you might be feeling a bit uncomfortable in a position, but you breathe through it. And, um, and this is what we do in everyday life. We might be in a, a situation that we don't want to be in, but you know, you, it's all about just coming back to the breath and coming back to, um, you know, feeling this feeling in this feeling of peace we always have inside of us that we can tap into at any moment. So it sort of teaches you to choose that feeling rather than maybe rage or something. So um, it's everything you learn in your yoga practice then just naturally comes out in your everyday life without you even knowing. Wow, I <laughs> yeah. love that. Even, even breathing, um, I didn't realise that I didn't know how to breathe before yoga. I would be breathing up here in my chest and by doing your yoga every day, you naturally start to breathe right into your belly and you don't feel right when you're breathing into your into your chest. Um, so yeah, it's pretty powerful stuff. It's, yeah. You've got me sold, Maddie. I'm gonna head out here and go for a bit of a yeah. yoga session. Well, I know everyone gets a bit bored with the breath, but it's so it, it can change your mind. Your the neuro neuro. I don't. I'm not very scientific, but it it can change the mind and the body. Um, that's how powerful it is. It's so. You know, your asanas are about the past. So your asanas are your poses. So if you, if you, um, your practice will depend on what you've eaten. Sometimes if you haven't eaten properly, you won't have enough energy. Um, it depends on how much practice you've done and how good your asanas are. So asanas are the most important thing about yoga because that, that's about the past. The breath is about the present. So um, it's, you know, uh, that's where if you stop and close your eyes, how your breathing will tell you about how you're feeling right there in that present moment. So if you've got shallow breaths, that might mean that you're a bit stressed or anxious. Um, and and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is the most important thing about yoga, I think. Wow. So meditation is about the future as well because – when we meditate, we take that piece into the future, into a, that, that day. So, yeah, it all combines into this one beautiful magic thing that will change your life. <laughs> got me sold. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, Maddie, yeah. you've got – I just – I admire you for the journey that you've travelled um, as well as, you know, you're following your passion, you're living your wild, precious life. Uh, like you said, you, against all odds, quit your job to start up a digital marketing business balanced with your yoga practice and your yoga teaching as well. You moved to the beach because it's always been a dream, even though people were saying there's no work don't down do there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't do it. And you're proof that you're making this work. And it hasn't been easy, obviously. It's been, there's been hard times in that oh, as well. Oh, so much work, yeah. Yeah, but how how is it? How does it feel to be doing this, even though it's still challenging? How you're in the middle of it, it's happening. How yeah. does it feel? Uh, I'm grateful for it every day. You have to be grateful. Even in those hard times, you still have to be grateful for what you have. Um, I never take it for granted. I Every time I'm in a beautiful rainforest or beach that's five minutes from my house, I always say, how lucky am I? Um, so it's pretty incredible. Yeah, there are definitely challenges, a lot of challenges um, when you work from home and, um, you know, you get a few more what different worries like income and having a steady income and those sorts of things, but it's worth it. I'm living my dream. Yay. Okay, I want yeah. to ask you a few questions now, just some quick fire questions about okay. yourself. First one, what is something that moves you or makes you cry? 
Um, I there there's a song that always gets me. Um, it's called Orange Sky by Alexi Murdoch, um, and it just reminds me of the bond I have with my sisters. So um, when my mum was pa- very sick and passed passed away now but um we went through a lot together and um I don't know how I would have got through that without them um and we became so much closer in that time and I um I just I see my mum now in my sisters um in all of them and there's still a part of her there and the bond I have with them is incredible and that song is about um, going through a hard time but having he talks about my sister standing by um, I've got goosebumps um, it's a beautiful song so that makes me cry when I hear that oh you're bringing a tear to my yeah. eye <laughs> What about what makes you laugh? I love laughing and having belly laughs. What gives you a huge belly laugh? I think that's actually on my Instagram um, little bio. Oh, I think, yeah. I think yeah, because belly laughs is one of my favorite things in the world. It's um, because when are you happier than when you're belly laughing? It's yeah, you're in the so present like, moment. You're yeah. releasing these great endorphins in your body. Oh. It's so important. I it's one of my favorite things to to belly laugh, and I'm really lucky because I have some friends that <laughs> every time I'm with them, I belly laugh. I've known them since high school or even younger, and um, even when we've been through the worst things together, which we have, even when my mum was passing away, they still use completely inappropriate humor to make me laugh and just bring me out of it for a moment. So um, belly laughing with my friends at their inappropriate jokes is my ultimate favourite. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. yeah. We all need a friend or a group of friends who can make us laugh oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And the last question is uh, what – this is a really good one that we're going to ask all our guests. What lesson or message would you give to your teenage self? Oh, that is a good one. Mm. Oh, God, I – I have so much to tell my teenage self. <laughs> Keep um, it brief. You've got to give one message, just like oh, one message God. to get them through. What you know? God. What have you learned that you just think this is the key to life, teenage well, self? The key to life is loving yourself. Oh. That is the key to life. Yeah. Um, because, and the most important thing to know is when you put yourself last, the universe will do the same. So... Put yourself first, love yourself, stand up for yourself. This is what I tell her. Stand up for yourself. Don't do anything you don't want to do. I made too many years trying to make other people happy and I was miserable. You be true to yourself. I love it. (laughs) Oh, God. You know, I'm thinking we're going to get so many pearls of wisdom from that question. We should write a book on it or, you you know, put something together. I love that, Maddie. That's just beautiful. Now, where can people reach out and learn more about you, your yoga, your digital marketing? Well, um, I'm in the middle of rebranding, so I won't give too much detail on my um, digital marketing yet. Um, But my Instagram is myjourneyyoga um, and uh, my website is myjourneyyoga.com. Beautiful. So I will put that in the show notes as well. And yeah, let Maddie know that you heard her on the podcast and that, you know, tell her about your journey and tell us about um, your journey as well. Maddie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to have you as our first guest. Great to chat to you, Jenny. Thank you. Please stay in touch. I can feel you helping us with lots of different things with our blog and, you know, being yeah. one of our yogi experts perhaps down the track yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, for everyone else, please, this is uh, – we've start, just started this podcast. So if you are listening on iTunes, we'd love for you to rate 
and subscribe. Ratings really help promote people, promote people so it gets the word out there and the more people we can help, the better. So at this stage, I think it's itunes.com slash wild precious lives. And remember, we've got links to all our show notes and Maddie's details and any of the, the books that we talked about on wildpreciouslives.com. So until we see you next week, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. And I've got one question for you. How are you living your wild, precious life? Thank you.